New measurements stones magma reservoir show that the top is 28% molten rock. A small team of geologists and seismologists from the University of Utah, Salt Lake, the Institute of Earth Sciences, Academia Sinica, Taipei and the University of New Mexico have studied the contents of Yellowstone's magma reservoir and reported differences from previous measurements. In their research, reported in the journal Earth and Planetary Science Letters, the group used seismic wave data to better understand conditions beneath Yellowstone National Park. Yellowstone National Park is a U.S. national park located in parts of Wyoming, Montana, and Idaho. The city is known for its beautiful views and geothermal features, such as the Old Faithful Geyser. These features exist due to a large magma reservoir located beneath the park. Previous research showed that over the past 16.5 million years, a hot spot beneath the national park had caused a series of volcanic eruptions, leaving behind numerous calderas. The last major eruption in the area is believed to have occurred around 640,000 years ago. Over the years, many research teams have studied Yellowstone's magma reservoir and found ways to measure its size and make predictions about its contents. The upper part of the reservoir is about 90 kilometers long and 40 kilometers wide. Beneath the upper reservoir is a lower chamber that is believed to be about 4.5 times larger. Previous studies of both chambers showed that the deeper reservoir was mostly made of solid material mixed with 2% melt. In contrast, the upper chamber experienced more melting. Before this new effort, researchers estimated between 16 and 20 percent melting. In this new effort, the researchers found the percentage was higher. After analyzing seismic wave data, they found about 28 percent melting. The percentage of melt in a magma reservoir is important because it can provide an indication of the possibility of an eruption. In this case, the new team agrees with previous assessments indicating that an eruption is unlikely in any area of the national park. The volcano beneath Yellowstone National Park has attracted interest and concern because it has experienced its most explosive and dramatic eruptions. In the geological record, he said, In the last 2.1 million years alone, Yellowstone has experienced three powerful eruptions, producing ashfall across the continent and disrupting the global climate. The most recent powerful explosion occurred around 631,000 years ago, forming a crater about 70 kilometers. Yellowstone's underground magma chamber contains mostly cold, hardened crystals mixed with some molten material. How much magma is present compared to the crystals can determine how ready a volcano is to erupt. The average amount of liquid magma in a volcano's belly is between 16 and 20 percent, Ross McGuire, a geophysicist at the University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign, and colleagues reported in Science on December 2. The critical melt fraction that allows a volcano to prepare to erupt ranges between 35 and 50 percent, the team said. Previously, researchers estimated Yellowstone's melt fraction to be between 5 and 15 percent. These new estimates do not represent actual changes. They are based on reanalyzes of existing seismic data that require far greater computing power than was possible in the past. We haven't really pushed our limits yet, McGuire said, but we're getting close. To see beneath the surface, scientists use information obtained from the speed of different types of seismic waves as they move through the ground.
seismic waves known as S waves are especially useful when searching for melt because they slow down when they encounter any fluid, such as water or molten magma. The researchers used the time it takes for S waves to travel from the transmission source to the receiver. Compared with the time it takes for other types of seismic waves that don't slow down in fluids, to estimate how much liquid magma is present. Before the advent of supercomputers, scientists imagined seismic waves traveling along a simple line from point A to point B then they converted the wave's travel time into speed and from there estimated the amount of fluid present. But the waves don't actually move in a line, they radiate outward. They do diffraction. When encountering a subsurface feature that could slow their movement, they may bend around it, rather than over it. That additional wave movement adds a lot of fine detail to the image, but it also requires a lot of computing power. Today, such calculations are possible. So McGuire and his colleagues used a more modern way of looking at seismic waves, called full waveform tomography, to reanalyze existing seismic data from Yellowstone. Peering between 3 and 8 kilometers underground, the team recorded S waves with a speed of about 2, 1 kilometer per second, occurs near the center of the Yellowstone caldera.